Welcome to Montgomery Hills Baptist Church. Uh, and it's good to see your warm, smiling faces here in this congregation. Uh, we give thanks to God uh, for your presence here and for those who are worshiping with us virtually in various spaces where you are. We are thankful for this community and the many ways that we can gather together in the name of Christ. This morning, you have an opportunity to fill out one of these that's connected to your worship guide gives us an opportunity to record your attendance here, and it gives you a chance to share with us information about prayer requests or other things you want us to know. And so you can fill that out now, and then when the offering plate goes by later, you can place this in the offering plate along with an offering later in worship. We've got uh, several um, opportunities for service that I want you to be aware of in preparation of worship. First of all, I want you to know that the beautiful flowers that adorn our sanctuary today are given by Brene Abate in honor of Giovanna's birthday on July 17th. And they're also in memory of Rosalie Maine, whose birthday was July 20th. And so Renee, thank you uh, for helping to bless and enhance our worship service with these flowers. Uh, I want to uh, let us know that today we have a library open house. That's today. So that's a few minutes after worship service. Make your way there. There'll be some light refreshments. Uh, and you'll have an opportunity to hear about some of the fiction, biographies, and various things that are located in our library. Matter of fact, uh, Pastor Adrian, who's pastor of Salem Gospel Ministries, came by this week and let me know that he appreciates the library that, that him and and a few others just get a chance to glance at a few resources we have, and you have that opportunity as well. Oh, and the children will have a story read to them immediately following worship by Sierra Hunter, who will help us out with that. Thank you. Um, you can see other um, opportunities for service under announcements uh, to just be aware of those things, as well as a missions opportunity July 26th in Bethany Hall. Uh, that there we will have Carmela Jones, who is our missionary that we support here at Montgomery Hills Baptist Church, and uh, she's going to be sharing a lot of ministry opportunities uh, that she is doing in Hungary and Liberia. More information of that to come next week, but go ahead and save the date for those, as well as worship in the park and rise against hunger and Habitat for Humanity Interfaith Playhouse. Whew. A lot of words. And now, a special space that we have, because we have gone throughout our day, many of us praying and being present with the work of God, but this is a special time that we have set apart to breathe, to receive, and to give, to be present to God, to be attentive to the work of God in our community and in our midst. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds as we worship God. Our pianist today is Karen Collins, my old friend. Uh, Jonathan is, was I not able? <laughs> I, I, Jonathan was not able to, to do today. He told me that when we first talked about him filling in for play. So Karen is a sub of a sub. I like that. 
Always glad to have her. Glorious is thy name, O Lord. We haven't sung this hymn in a long time, so I hope that you remember it quickly and join it in singing praise to God. Let's stand. unite our hearts in prayer. O oh God, our Father, thank you for this day and for bringing us together to worship you. 
Thank you for loving us and meeting us where we are. I am grateful that you know our hearts and understand our prayers, even when we struggle to find words to say. We ask for your protection for all who are traveling and for those dealing with the heat and the storms that are so common this time of year, especially be with those affected by Hurricane Burl. Every day, we face more and more unrest and violence in our world. In regions like Israel, Gaza, Senegal, Cameroon, Sudan, Haiti, Niger, the Congo, Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Turkey, and Ukraine. And Lord, within our nation, we are recently experiencing violence and loss of life. When I wrote this prayer, I thought I would be just talking about a celebration in the lives of three young men who died in a car crash and the violence that occurred during their celebration. But yesterday, we watched in horror as someone who was running for president of the United States had an assassination attempt. Lord, we pray for all those who are impacted by violence for their physical and emotional well-being. Please bring peace and understanding to our world, to our nation, and our community. Take away our desire for violence. Help us to reflect your love. We also ask for your grace and mercy for those who are sick and their caregivers and for those who are grieving. We lift up the names on our prayer list. Lewis Charlotte, Bev Lacey, Reverend Jerry Young, Janet Stewart, Kim Stipley, Rob McClute, Olaf Lopez, Phyllis Murphy, Sharon Claggett, Maria Cotter, Bob Curry, John and Angela Joyner, and Cindy King McGee, who is experiencing cancer while also being pregnant. We pray for Joel Hawthorne, who is back in the hospital, Willie King, who will be undergoing surgery this coming week. We also lift up Sally, Denise Lewis, Jonathan Prasad, John DiStefano, Paul Gonzalez, George Rainey, Steve Cross, Angela, We also lift up prayers for, for Deb Coltrane, Alfred and Ghislaine, and the Prasad family. And Lord, we rejoice and thank you that Dennis Wiley is grieving daily. And now we join together, saying the words that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day.
ushers please come forward for the morning offering. And as they do so, I just want to thank Cheryl and the choir for such beautiful music this morning to lift our hearts and calm our minds. Heavenly Father, we come to you with hearts full of gratitude, acknowledging the countless blessings that you have given us. Thank you for your grace, your love, and provision in our lives. We are deeply grateful for the opportunity to gather here today and to offer back to you a portion of what you have generously given to us. Bless these gifts, Lord. May they be used to further your kingdom, to spread your love, and to bring hope to those in need. We ask that you bless each giver, filling their hearts with joy and peace. May their generosity be a reflection of your love and inspire others to give willingly and joyfully. We pray that you guide our church leaders in the wise and faithful stewardship of these gifts. Help us to use these resources to serve you and our community and to shine your light even in the darkest of places. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, 
bring many things today and it is all welcome in this place because God welcomes us fully in this place. I invite you to hear some words written from the Apostle Paul to the church at Corinth. A second letter he writes to the church at Corinth that we have and he even mentions a third letter that came before the second one. He writes to them out of his deep love and passion for them as a congregation. And so he writes this. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God, was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Then I add in verse 21, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now God made the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. In your sight, my rock, my redeemer. The ministry of reconciliation, of turning hostility into friendship. 
turning division into an opportunity of unity. Turning that which is broken into that which is beautiful. Thank you, Paige, for your prayers today, offering a prayer of the people. And within that prayer that Paige prayed was a prayer <clears throat> for former President Trump and those injured and the families of the deceased in the shooting that happened yesterday in Pennsylvania. There's not many words that can be said other than the words that we often exclaim during certain parts of the Christian year, and that is, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Many prayers have been prayed for peace and unity. Some of those prayers have been prayed even this morning. They continue to be prayed across our nation. But in addition to these prayers, I echo the questions that were raised by my good friend and fellow clergy, Matt Homeyer of Trinity Baptist Church in San Antonio, Texas, where there he asks, and I ask the same question, where am I? Contributing to the division that plagues us. How and where has hate or distrust and fear of those with whom I disagree and camp in my soul? This question that, that my friend asked himself and that I have asked myself, I invite you to ask yourself. Where do we contribute to the divisions that plague us? This morning, as your pastor and co labor in Christ, I seek forgiveness for the places where and when and how I am guilty of sowing division rather than seeking to be an agent of peace and blessing by which we are called those who are in Christ. And so this morning, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. For I am convinced of the gospel of Jesus Christ that in the face of division and violence, that unity and peace will always be preceded by repentance. And so, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Because we live in a broken world. Beautiful, yes and broken. We are constantly vacillating between the brokenness that we see with our own eyes and the brokenness that permeates our hearts and the brokenness that we experience in relationships around us and even the brokenness of relationships with God, the one who calls us one who loves us as a loving parent, calling for wayward children, often left speechless, desiring a better way to live in this beautiful and broken world. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. This incredible time that we live, where thoughts can travel in 
an instant. Friend lists can be made and monetized at the click of a button. Where the seeds to mobilize hatred can be sown in 146 characters or less. That is where we live today. But a vision can be made where silos are created. And what is and has been created to be beautiful is broken. Someone once asked me a question, Pastor, why do you always, when you talk about the world and you always talk about people, why do you always say broken and beautiful at the same time. You always put those two words together. And I had never had anybody ask me that question and hadn't put much thought about it until they asked me. And, and after some thought, I think the reason why I do that is because I want to be in the practice of not painting people with broad brushes and not painting the world with a broad brush it's only broken that leads to despair, but also not everything fine and dandy as if we've already arrived or obtained, but, but I think I couple those two things together because I believe that, that really the thought of the Christian couples those two together because it is a practice of seeing the world as it is. With all of its challenges, with all of its hardships, with all of its brokenness, but also seeing the beauty in it. Why? Because there is a Christ who is at work doing the work of redemption and reconciliation in the broken world. Broken and beautiful at the same time. We live in that tension. And we, as Christians, if we're not careful, we will be caught up by the tide and moved into places where we will begin to echo the very brokenness by which Christ came to save and redeem and deliver and set free from. French Impressionist painter Renoir, some of you all may know, was confined in his home to the end of his life. The last decade, he was often visited by his friend, Henry Matisse, who was about three decades younger than him, but would go and see his friend Renoir every single day. And Renoir was, was, was almost paralyzed from arthritis, yet he continued to paint every single day in his life. He'd hold the brush as best he could between his thumb and the index finger as he painted. And, and the students that were there would often hear him crying out in pain. One day, Henry Matisse watched his elder friend uh, in the studio painting so much that it almost seemed torturous. With every brush stroke and, and finally he says, why do you paint? You are in such agony. And Renoir said, the pain passes, but the beauty remains. And as Christians, we are challenged to view beauty and brokenness the same way. We are challenged to see the rose that grows out of the broken cross. We are challenged to see Christ's healing and redemptive work even in a world that seems increasingly divided and violent day in and day out. Yes, our world is broken and yes, there is beauty at work in it. There is beauty at work in it. There is redemption that is taking place in it because we don't serve a dead Savior, but we serve a risen Savior. One who did not complete the work in its entirety, but it will happen in its entirety. We are living in that space.
face here and now. Sin has been defeated, but we still battle against sin until the final day when it is rested underneath his feet. It's a here and now, a now and not yet. It is both and broken and beautiful. Now and not yet. It's a good word for us today. It's a good word for those who were at the church in Corinth. As Paul was speaking to them, having one foot in the redeeming, reconciling work of Christ and the other foot drawn away, being divided by all of the ways that people can be divided. So this morning we see broken people in a church who are confronted with a beautiful message. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. If you are in Christ, new creation. Reminded of the little book I read Langston and Maya before they go to bed called The Hungry Hungry Cat. This book about this caterpillar who is on this leaf and hatches from the egg and discovers that he's hungry. And so the caterpillar eats through the leaf in the book. And what I love about the book is the book actually has little hole marks <laughs> to show where the caterpillar is eating. And then after the caterpillar eats from the leaf, he's still hungry. So he goes and he eats various types of fruit each day and each day his hunger increases more and more and more and finally at the end of a week the caterpillar has eaten everything from Swiss cheese to salami to salami to chocolate cake and, and then the caterpillar wakes up for one more day and, and eats through an entire leaf and then after the caterpillar eats through the entire leaf then the caterpillar is no longer hungry then hungry caterpillar, which is no longer hungry, wraps itself in a cocoon and there it waits till the appropriate time before the caterpillar edges its way out. And behold, a beautiful butterfly. The end. The end of the book is right there. Oh, how I would love to know what the stories would be about the butterfly what the butterfly would do and what the butterfly used to do that the butterfly doesn't do anymore. We don't get that, but, but what we see is when that butterfly was in that cocoon, something happened. A transformation happened, and when we saw it, it was beautiful. Behold, new and beautiful creation. Such is the truth for those who are in Christ. For when you are in Christ, you are a new creation. There is a transformation that has happened and is happening on the inside of you. Sometimes people can see it, and sometimes it cannot be seen. But there is a transformation taking place, and behold, there you are. A part of the beauty that God is doing in this world. New reality, new ways of thinking, new ways of existing in the world, new ways of entering into the comment section of your favorite social media platform, new ways of existing in conversations with others. Why? Because the old has passed away. Behold, all things become new. Where we are as those who follow Christ, as the big C church, is that I believe that sometimes we have forgotten that we have wings and are made to see things from 
a different vantage point. Where it is almost foolish to see a caterpillar with wings still crawling on the ground with caterpillars. Not butterflies. Butterflies are made to soar, to see differently, to reach places that the caterpillar would always dream. New creation. The pastor, I'm tired of being tired. Yes, but you're in Christ. New creation. Oh, but I struggle to hold my tongue. Yes, new creation. Oh, but pastor, I'm challenged to walk a life of purity. Yes, but new creation. Oh, pastor, I've got to fight to keep my integrity sometimes. Yes, but new creation. Oh, but God, sometimes they want to take my peace. Yes, but new creation. God makes God's appeal through us. Not because we think that we are so great and grand. Not because we have it in us to desire that, but it's because we are in Christ. We have been made new. And the newness by which we have been made new is the first fruit of what God is doing to make this world beautiful through reconciliation, through turning that which is hostile to that which God says, I have done that between me and you through my son. And now it is your turn to do that in this world. We are called to Christ. We are called to be in Christ. And to be called to be in Christ is to be called to the reconciling the work of changing that which is hostile to that which is friendly. That is our calling. It is the message. And it is the words that should come from our mouth and the way that we Relationship with the world, new relationship with sin, new values for career and for work and vocation, new passions to serve, new ability to grieve with those who grieve and rejoice with those who rejoice, new compassion.
been like for you in the midst of what seems to be shaping up to be a quite difficult and challenging and maybe even violent political season in our nation? What does it look like for you as you consider the person that you haven't spoken to in 10 years because they offended you? What does it look like? Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Help us to be the beauty